Hello, everybody. Oh, so my quiet people that I expected. So, so what I'm going to talk about today is the K native stuff. So, kick one. How many of you are? Uh, oops. Sorry about that. Oh. All right. So, so how many of you are some experience of uh, serverless computing? Nobody? Oh, just people. All right. And how many of you have some heard about k native purple? All right. Cool. So today I'm going to be talk about k native makes developer awesome in the serverless journey. So let me talk about me first very briefly. So my name is Daniel Rowe. I'm a uh, DevOps evangelist at, at Red Hat, and as well as working as a solution architect. So I'm specialized in more cloud-native app dev based on agile and DevOps practice, rather than just single Red Hat product or some methodology. So I got a many chance to talk about this agenda, cloud-native, microservices, DevOps, DevSecOps, and even recently, uh, submarines with the enterprise developers. So, so, so just keep one, one more time. So how many of you are enterprise developers or are just developers? Oh, yeah. Perfect. And out of Red Hat, I'm CNCF ambassador. So I try to spend a lot of time to give some inspiration uh, who needed to inspire about to looking for the, some better way to build a cloud every application based on CNCF project. Of course, Kubernetes and uh, Prometheus and Envoy Proxy, and recently we have another good project, uh, Graduate the Core DNS as well. And I'm actually, I'm Java developer more than 16 years. I love the Java technology, and also I really love to writing some technical and non-technical article in opensource.com in my pro, uh, private blog. So if you have any question about me, about my specialty after this session, uh, you can uh, follow my Twitter, you can go through my Git repo, and also you can send me my email directly. So this is the bottom line of today's session. So if you're looking for just something like the, the fundamental stuff, like uh, what, the mean, what does that mean of a serverless computing platform and function as a service like a FAST. So I don't have enough time today to go through every single detail, but luckily I uh, wrote about uh, this uh, fundamental stuff in opensource.com. So just you need to uh, at least 10 minutes to go through this article. So seven open source platform to get started with the serverless computing. So, so rather than talk about that uh, fundamental stuff, I'm going to talk about a little bit more the developer experience stuff. So uh, in the meantime, I uh, asked many uh, uh, many times to enterprise developer, though how does enterprise developer imagine the serverless computing? But the answer, more than 80%, more than 90% was the Amazon Lambda. So Amazon Lambda is really cool, and, but there is some big challenge if you uh, run your serverless application or a container application, just Microsoft's application on top of that. I'm going to go through a little bit later. And this is a developer. Uh, are thinking about what uh, serverless, serverless is. This is a principle as a developer point of view. So developer, doesn't, uh, developer doesn't worry about the infrastructure to run serverless application, for example. So I don't want to take care about how many virtual machines should be provisioned uh, before I deploy my serverless application. And also, they're looking forward to uh, auto-scaling capability along with their rapid changing the workloads. And last thing is the money. So if you use the Amazon Lambda, you need to pay for the big money uh, the, for the amount of your uh, time you're consuming, uh, you are consuming your Amazon Lambda. So I love uh, this picture. Because the still many people, developer, IT operation team, and some even CIO stuff, they misunderstand what serverless is, like uh, just picture. There's no server uh, in the data center, but that is not true. There are many servers, maybe 100,000 servers, because the 
a public cloud provider will take care of the instead you and developers. So this is a, a most important three things to uh, address your serverless architecture, serverless application on your local machine or your, on your uh, on-prem infrastructure and even public cloud, event, services, and functions. So I'm going to go through uh, how to relate those three things as part of the developer journey. So many, many years ago, developer have a big one monolith application. So maybe this is a, something uh, Frankenstein big monolith application, but this is perfect. That is true because it contain, this monolith application contains 100% functionality to address your business requirement. But there's a big challenge. You probably know that uh, it's very hard to maintain your, your monolith application, needed to spend a lot of time to maintain that. So that's why developer uh, uh, begun uh, sp uh, separating or splitting their big monolith application as you're into small piece of uh, modules. But the truth is the module uh, should be packed with uh, one single artifact like a word file or a job file in Java technology, for example. And also you can have uh, some big middleware like a, a Oracle, IBM, and another big local uh, middleware stuff. That's why microservice was born. So since 2014, the Spring Boot was born, and many developers uh, really love to use uh, Spring Boot application. <coughs> the microservice application fundamentally have their own independent runtime environment based on Java technology and also another the runtime environment. And in the reality, your enterprise production, so your microservice have very complicated uh, this uh, architecture, like a uh, network services. And more importantly, so your microservices or a modern application uh, might have a multiple entry point, like a RESTful API to communicate another uh, microservice application, and also some invocation request from end user based on web browser, like a GUI stuff. And also there are multiple data sources rather than just a big single united database. So you can follow to uh, designing perspective as a CQRS rather than CRUD and uh, event sourcing or a SEGA pattern, something like that. So now you have uh, functions in this architecture, in the network services architecture with the Microsoft application. So what is that function means for your service application? So go back to the, the three those things. So now you have uh, many events. For example, hey, I needed to uh, rendering my 3D images to provide an user based on GUI, or I needed to uh, uh, save or store my log file to uh, tracing uh, when I have uh, some error, something like that. That kind of all is events. So event called function. Function means your application. The application, very small piece of your function, uh, might call the backend another Microsoft application. So as a developer point of view, so what is the easiest way to run those three things and address the events and functions and backend services? So I already mentioned earlier that is that the public cloud provider like Amazon Lambda. But there are two big challenges if you use the managed service to run your service application. The first of all is the cannot address multi-cloud strategy. So if you adopt one single uh, public cloud vendor to address your service workloads, you cannot uh, build some multi-cloud strategy. You want to run your many thousand functions on top of the private cloud, public cloud, even hybrid cloud, including on-prem. It's not possible if you use just Amazon Lambda or Google Microsoft functions. And second of all, as more than uh, more the developer point of view, so it's a constraint of a dependency. So some of your developer team wants to build or develop some microservice application or service application using uh, Java technology or JavaScript or Python, Go, any other things. But 
Maybe the app, if you, if you use the Amazon Lambda, they'll provide some, uh, just a couple of the runtime, including Java, but not everything. So that's the point of the, the challenge. So what is the solution to figure out this problem? Simple, managing by yourself in your team. And in the meantime, luckily, we have a, such a great technology. You probably already know that. The, the Linux container, so for example, the OCI forming container, images container, uh, now uh, enable the developer to run 100% perfect the, with the artifactory, such as you could uh, pack your application code and runtime and depend on rivalry. And also, the developer doesn't worry about uh, some service discovery, registering, networking, and something else because the Kubernetes will take care of that instead of uh, developer. And Istio service mesh. So, you know, the Netflix OSS stuff and Spring Cloud, Spring Boot, uh, the one thing, uh, big ch one thing, the one big challenge for developer. So, developer. Uh, should take care of all configuration and micro, like Microsoft's capability, such as the logging, tracing, and intelligent routing, and full tolerance, such as the uh, circuit breaking, which means the developer uh, injects some configuration or some YAML file or some property file into their application code, into their method in Java classes. But service mesh, based on Istio uh, will address instead uh, for the developers and all APIs. This is the beauty of the, uh, the current architecture of the public cloud, even internal uh, data centers, some uh, services. So now, uh, if you, for example, developer uh, wants to, ah, hey, I needed to some uh, backend data services. Yeah, you don't need to implement where you don't connect to a backend uh, data set database itself, you just call API, data as a service, or uh, an storage, and you can call the based on S3 data as a service. So all this is, uh, technology make it easier, quicker to uh, develop, build, and manage your uh, service application. And more importantly, uh, the Kubernetes with the servers. This is the beauty of the Kubernetes. So there are more than 13. Uh, Serverless and a fast open source project based on Kubernetes. So if you uh, might, if you might have some interest about uh, this project, you can go through the landscape, the CNCF.io. There are Serverless, uh, the CNCF service working group. So, but truth is, uh, developer is not easy for uh, the uh, Kubernetes is not easy for developer. That is true still, because that container and Kubernetes, and which means the developer needed to learn a lot of things about feature and some command line or some architecture, uh, how the Kubernetes works and how to use that for running your service application. So that's why uh, the Knable was born. So just uh, the funny thing is, uh, the maybe six months ago, so I met with a, I met with a customer to talk about the summary strategy of Red Hat. So we just told about the Apache Apple Whisk. This is our cloud function based on Apple Ship Container Platform. But now we just got to uh, talk about the Knative. So Knative uh, is, of course, uh, based on Kubernetes. And, for the, and now uh, developer uh, can build, deploy, and uh, manage your service application on top of that. So this is a primitive. So there are uh, three primary uh, components of Knative build serving event. I'm going to show you a quick demo just right away uh, how to uh, stand out your service application for developer point of view. And most important is the Istio service mesh is as a default running on top of, on top of the Knative. So I'm going to show you some quick demo. So uh, after this session, you can go through yourself. It's a Reddit developer, uh, the Knative tutorial. So there are many. Uh, 
documentation, how to set up uh, your uh, local Knet, the Kubernetes platform. So Miniship is based on Minikube, and how to install your Istio stuff, and how to install uh, Knet service is all, uh, it's actually not, it's technically not installation, it's sort of the uh, deployment and the running of the path. So this is, is my local machine, and I already uh, stand out my uh, container environment. So let me go uh, click through my local environment based on mini shift. So I already uh, stand out my uh, local environment based on the Istio service mesh and can you build, can you have a serving. So give us the uh, get part. Still. So you can find there's some uh, the default the part about Istio service mesh like uh, ingress, egress, and sidecar, etc. And also there are Kenny uh, primary component build and survey. Yeah, it's all fine because they already stand out and finger crossed. Uh, the network is not good. All right, so here's my demo scenario. I'm a developer, so what is the first entry point to, uh, uh, to go jump into the server uh, journey? The first thing is that you have to develop so your own application. Maybe you can use the Spring Boot. So here is my Spring Boot application. I already, uh, my simple uh, Spring Boot application. So my artifact is greater and the version is 001. And some dependency is a very simple Spring Boot starter, Spring Boot web, Spring starter test, no more. And this is my uh, simple application, Greeter. Hello, can I be on right here? I changed some code. Dev com check. So, so imagine that I already uh, done. I, implementation of my uh, small piece of microservice application. So what is the next thing is, I'm gonna build my Spring Boot application. I'm gonna, ta I'm gonna skip test to save my time for just demo and clean package it. it it'll be just a couple of seconds to build, build success, and just uh, make sure uh, I have, if I have the um, artifact, like a job file, target, and grid, uh, yeah, just making that. And what is the next thing is the, uh, I need to some unit test for uh, making sure my application uh, is working. So, spring, Boot. The one of the beauty of a Spring Boot just you need to two seconds to run. It's already there, and you can check with by call. Local host. So hello, KNAB on DevConf. Cool. Oh, you can use the uh, web browser, localhost 880. Yeah, same. All right, cool. So now you already done to create, uh, develop your Microsoft application, and you make sure how it works based on a uh, unit test. What is the next thing is you have to containerize your application before deploying the Knative. So I'm going to shut down my local environment. And once again, uh, I'm going to skip my task to save my uh, demo time and clean package. I'm going to use a Jeep utility for Docker build today. And also the, the primary of Knave, the Knave build is the one of the feature to build your container image 
uh, based on multiple steps, and you could uh, the remote the Git repository. But today, I'm going to uh, show you uh, using the Jeep uh, utility to uh, make it shorter. And now I have a Docker images and Gorilla. Yeah, I have so. So what is the next thing is the, I need to deploy my serverless application based on my uh, Microsoft application. So I already have a, uh, defined. So Knative, uh, as a default, you, uh, you is using the Kubernetes CRD object to custom the resource definition. So you can find that uh, the serving Knative dev is one of the CRD of K, the, uh, Kubernetes. And also, I want to use this the container image that I just created. So just simple, you already know that uh, cube apply my service YAML. But in order to make sure, get cube CTL, pass, and watch. So there's no part in my project, in my namespace. So I want to deploy my serverless application. And just like that, at the same time, exactly the same time, I deploy my serverless application. And you can see there are two slash two, which means the, some, um, the, the sidecar container uh, will be injected automatically by Istio service mesh. And I can call to make sure my service application works. Come on, come on. And the, the Miniship to have some great console during the time. So this is my DevCom project, and I already deployed that. All right. It's a really big network problem. And one of the, I wanted to show you last thing is, This is one of the auto scaling of a com the configuration of auto scaling of Knative. So you can see here. So grace period and threshold, which means the in this demo, I just configure to one minute, which means during the one minute there is no request from end user. This is, this is your micro, your Microsoft application will be shutting down automatically, scale down to zero. That is the beauty of the serverless application. So you can see that they are already terminating. So go back to the uh, Miniship console, the web UI already terminating. And after, if you call once again, your application stand up automatically. Oh, come on, some little problem, okay. So go back to the, I have enough time to today, so go back to the slide. All right, the serving, the one of the uh, three components of the KNAV serving is to provide the functionality to uh, scale down to zero uh, after there are any requests from your end user. That is the one of the uh, mandatory functionality of a uh, the serverless uh, platform, a second of all, build. So today in the demo, I just use Git, Jeep, utility, but uh, you can use the build primitive on top of the Knative to build your container image. You can define multiple steps, and you can, uh, uh, you, you can push your container registry. You can uh, ret retrieve some uh, Git repository to access some your application code itself. And last thing is eventing. So imagine that uh, you are, uh, there are a bunch of the, the serverless application or serverless container, but it's uh, happening in the different time, which means the, some producer create your serverless application, but 
Uh, the other is using that, a uh, consumer using that in a different time. So eventing will take care of that uh, with the lazy uh, binding. So the last thing is, so now developer can use that uh, k enabled just, uh, instead of the Kubernetes itself, or you can use the, uh, if you have a fast platform like Apache OpenWhisk and you know, another project, if you want to more uh, some fancy CLI or uh, such as debugging and web UI, et cetera, et cetera. So here's my sources. So you can uh, go through the opensource.com. There are many uh, summaries and Apache Open West related article, and there are Red Hat blog and also Knable tutorial. You can follow that yourself. And we are out of time. Thank you for that. <laughs>